welcome to the June 19th uh, Hadley Public School School Committee meeting. Uh, Paul Pfeiffer will be joining us uh, a little bit late home from straight from New Zealand. And Humera is in London. So we are like truly international today. Um, so may I get a uh, motion to call the meeting to order? Motion to call the meeting to order. Second. All in favor. Aye. All right. Are there any adjustments to the agenda for tonight? Um, just that we will, re we may, not will, reconvene an open session after executive session, but otherwise there aren't any. Okay. And I was just informed that Jack Kelly, our student representative, is not attending tonight. Okay. All right. Um, so executive session, all right, and we may reconvene afterwards. All right. Presentations and discussion items. So first is the field trip master calendar preliminary draft. Thank you for putting that together. This was a request to try to get a um, yeah. fuller picture of all of the different field trips, things that we know we're standing, that we always do, things that might be every other year, and things, big trips that we know are on the horizon. Um, and to also give us a chance to kind of look overall across the, the costs of those trips and um, the grades involved and, yeah opportunities so and so what we'll add to this is um, I think for example that the DC trip I believe that they try to do that every other year so we would add you see where it says annual mm -hmm. we'll also add um, that as we get student counts we'll update that as well and so um, before you before you listen to any field trip presentation We'll make sure that this is included in the packet. And Susan, just so you know what they're looking at, what we put together is what we have for 2019-20 um, that's already on the books. So we have the D.C. trip is proposed for grades 10, 11, and 12. We have um, Costa Rica um, and... That must be grades 9 through 12. It is. Yeah, we, our formatting got a little off there. <laughs> um, grades 9 through 12. And we have uh, Europe, England, France, Ireland, 10, 11, and 12. The band music festival in Boston, which is an annual trip in April. Um, so DC was in October, Costa Rica in February, Europe, April, band, April. New York City, which is the eighth grade trip and annual, that's in May. And Nature's Classroom, which is a grade seven trip, it's annual. We put down June, although I know that can be different. But that um, New York City trip might return back to Boston because of the curriculum changes. Oh, okay. It's now Massachusetts. Um, oh, okay. Sunny right. Massachusetts. That's good to know. Thank but you. It's not decided yet, but yeah. I know that Ms. Salon brought to my attention that, oh, New York trip for the eighth grade because of the new curriculum alignment. Yeah. So, um, and we'll just keep this up to date, and as I said, we'll uh, include it every time prior to you hearing about a field trip, so right. you'll know. Yeah, and adding the number of students. And the number of students. Yeah. All right. Good. Any questions on that? No, this is just so far. Yeah. yeah. To see an overview. For me as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> These kids go a lot of places. I just need yeah. to keep track of where they're going. Especially when you have kids going to multiple of those trips. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's right. That's right. Okay, um, so speaking of field trips, we're, uh, next item is the um, Hopkins Academy Environmental Science Field Trip Proposal. Ms. Duncan. Yes, um, so I want to do a five day trip to Florida. Um, I really passionate about the environmental side of science, and um, the kids are also really um, moved by wanting to do this. That. Um, we we'll go to Florida. I do, so we we'll go to Florida um, to visit the coral reefs, the Everglades, a dolphin care center. Um, there's quite a bit of looking at the coral reefs, um, but it's all um, about learning. This is not just going and visiting areas to get involved in some of the research that's going on with the coral and learn um, how to be active participants in saving the coral reefs. Um, so two days are doing stuff for the coral. Um, one day in the Everglades and learning about the ecosystems and all the different organisms that live there. And we're getting a guided tour with a lecture while we're there. So it's a ranger that's really going to talk to the kids the whole way through about everything that's there. And then we have a day five, a day, sorry, day four is now a day that I asked them to leave open for us. They did arrange our hotel and meal, our dinner. But the rest of it, the kids, when I met with them to see if I had interest in the trip, 
I um, really wanted to, we were starting to look online at some of these places. They, there's so much there in Key Largo that they, we wanted to go to some of the free stuff that's available. And that's something the kids wanted to decide. And obviously, we would decide before, well before we go, we'd have a plan um, that's right in Key Largo. And then the last day, we visited a Dolphin Care Center. Um, and then we head home again. There is an option of credit, college prep credit. Um, through the program, but also the kids were interested in doing independent study with me and I could provide them, or with any of the science teachers in the building, because one of the things I was going to do, we have a lot of new science staff next year, is welcome them onto this trip to see if they want to be involved. And so any of the science teachers could do some independent work with it, um, with the studying of the coral and the ecosystems and the organisms that live there. So it goes through, there's more detail on here uh, this is a brief overview. And the biology standards that are involved on the last page, some of them, um, the math ones and looking at, at actual data sets would be in the independent study of the coursework if they choose, not why we're actually there. Hey, Paul, did you just join? Hello? He's still getting connected. Sorry to interrupt. Um, also, the chaperones, when I had um, the initial meeting, see if there was interest before pushing ahead with this. I wanted to make sure the kids wanted to go. We had 15 kids show up and want to go after the meeting. And then I had kids see me in the hallway, but I told them they needed to wait until I got approved, until the trip got approved. And then I would email them and let them know if they wanted to put their initial deposit. The reason why I wanted to do the trip um, approval so far out, it brings the cost way down for the deposits. Um, I do want to do some fundraising, but again, I would meet with the kids together to fundraising. Some of the ideas are the, um, the movie nights at HES. I've done in the past with classes, and that's a, that's a good one. I think this group of kids that I have, they're young right now. They're in seventh going into eighth, but will be in ninth grade when we go on this trip. Yeah. Um, something that they would be good at doing. Also, I've done with the equestrian team a few years ago, um, the Three County Fair bus where they sell ads and some of the kids for individual cost of the trip they sold they paid for their entire season off that fundraiser. It's a fundraiser the team has not wanted to do recently so I would be interested in seeing if this group of kids wanted to do it. I have a big favor for you mm -hmm. if you're asking answering questions. Do you mind sitting over here so oh, I can see you? Because he just well there he is. There he is. <laughs> Susan was talking. Miss Duncan was can talking. Us? Paul. Can you hear us? Hi. Can you hear us, Paul? No. No, oh, well, he can. You're there. Yeah. I didn't see the, um, and I mean, I missed it, the total estimated. Oh, person. that's in the, that's in the packet. Okay. Um, that was, there should be a, the, it's not payment the page. Page. It's, Oh, oh there it is. To yeah. Investment. Okay. It's, um, 18, 15. Yes. It, it is a little bit more costly than I originally wanted. Oh, I'm missing. Uh, page 14 is the footer. Seems to be under tour specifics. Oh, okay. Found yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. It looks different than um, the other. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. So it's a little bit more expensive um, because we're we're actually getting speakers and lectures Can you hear me to the kids, and they're involved in the research. But for five days, when I looked at the cost of other trips, um, it seems comparable, even though they're doing like a special trip where they're doing really getting involved in the research aspect of mm -hmm. um, the ecosystems that are in Florida. Does it in include, is the 1815 all expenses? Everything. Okay. Well, and I'm sorry, can you say, but go ahead. Sorry. Yes, everything except for lunch on the one day, breakfast and lunch on the one day. Can you tell me the grades again? Nine through 12. This is February 2021? Yes. Okay. We do this one day of school, the Friday to leave, and then it's over February break the rest of it. Got it. I didn't want to take a whole break because I was worried kids would worry about, or parents would worry. I know that's a big vacation week. Yeah. So that yeah. we come back on the Wednesday. And thank you for the alignment to the um, different standards. And I didn't have the environment, I do apologize, I would have looked at our school's environmental science standards, but I didn't have access to them when I did this. So I just looked at the biology frameworks offline. I was just going to look.
look at environmental science. Um, I know in the middle. curious about the enrollment in, uh, the, in the class. Oh, in that class? Yeah. I'm not sure. Oh, the tw 12 for this, that unit for that right now. Yep. Okay. I know the group, there's a, so 15, and there's just maybe 15 middle schoolers and one, so 14 middle schoolers and one high schooler came, and they're very passionate. They would probably do more than one if they yeah. were available about the environment and wanting to learn more about how to help the impacts of the environment. Yep. So that's what I'm trying to help do. Perfect. Yes, so, we're going to have an environmental presentation soon on straws. You are. Yeah. You are. You'll have to come to that, Ms. Duncan. I'm, I'm looking on the it. elementary. Our elementary students are, again, um, they're very serious about this, about um, the town and our school district making a more serious commitment to environmentally sound practices. So well, I have a group of elementary students who are coming and I, I'm going to say it here, I won't say which student said this, it was so endearing when I said, well, you'll have to present to the school committee and then the select board, and that's on camera, and this student, one of the students said, wow, we'll be famous. I didn't have the heart to say <laughs> that's, that's all it takes. <laughs> well, it's great that they want to do that because when I've gone to different environmental meetings, mm -hmm. to make impact on children is not through the classroom, it's getting them involved in something in their town, and it, mm -hmm. it sticks with them for life. Yeah, so they're very passionate about that. Yeah. So you had mentioned um, bring this in as like an independent study, um, especially with some of that, so some of those math standards and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, with it being such a very group of kids, mm -hmm. that, that would be individualized by grade level for like, the kind of independent study work yes. that they would do? Well, yeah, the, well the independent studies that I do are always tailored to the student that I have. They're mostly been science fair and then this horse management class that I've done. So it's really tailored to the student that's in front of me, which is what I would do with them. But then they can also pay for the college problem mm -hmm. stuff if they want to just do the online thing. Um, because then they're getting more credit than our, what we do for independent study here. Mm -hmm. So. And just putting in a plug for a, a National Wildlife Refuge um, on that off day, if you did them, I'm not exactly yes. sure, just, just throw them There is, there's a lot, there's a lot <laughs> down there. It's, I, mean, I didn't realize until we started looking at the websites, it's just unbelievable what's down there. And I want to go visit it, why it's still there. There, there. Exactly <laughs> there. It's still there. Because the reports I've seen this week, it might not be there forever. So. And you may have some connections here to uh, help connect you with somebody there, yeah. <laughs> right? Yes. Yes. Between these guys. All right. Any questions? Paul, any questions from you? We can't hear you, but we see you shaking your head. So, all right. Great. Um, so this does require a vote. Mm -hmm. um, is there a motion? Motion to approve the. Um, Florida science field trip in February of 2021. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. That's exciting. Nice. All right. Hey, there, folks. I'm, I've been oh. on mute, so you uh, I'm not going to talk much, but thanks. I can hear you. Great. I recorded you as an in favor. Is that correct? Is that an in favor? That's good. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> You can just give me a thumbs up on the votes, or a thumbs down, okay. or I'm not, or, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> or just walk out of the room if you're yeah. yeah. staying. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Ms. Thank Duncan. You. And Ms. Duncan, I meant to say this, um, I mean this sincerely, I know you printed the, uh, these off, can you send me an electronic copy, because yes. your presentations to the school committee with the standards yes. are an exemplar of, oh. you do a great job of lining up field trips to the standards, so. If you can send it to me, then I can give it to folks as an example. Okay, great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Forever. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Uh, the third presentation, Hadley Kids Program 2019-2020. Yes. So we have invited, well, I have invited <clears throat> Kimberly Pfeiffer here, who is um, all is currently the president of the board. Is that correct I for Hadley Kids? I am the treasurer and an executive board member of Hadley Kids Inc. Yes. After school. Program. And a parent. Yes. Uh, Would you like me to sit closer to the Oh, yeah, and then Paul can hear you too. Do you Absolutely. mind sitting next no. to Terry? Ter Not at all. <laughs> Agreed. That's fine. Right. You are our ambassador. Thank you. Um, and so Kim is gracious enough to be here this evening to help answer any questions that you might have. And I'm comfortable just giving a 
a quick background. Um, originally, about a year ago, I had a conversation with uh, two of the board members for Hadley Kids and um, Jenny from Park and Rec. And we talked about whether or not Hadley Kids should or could become something that's run by the school department, the after school program. At that time, I had suggested that perhaps Park and Rec, Rec explore taking it over. I thought at that time um, there were some questions about uh, dedicated revenue streams for Park and Rec. There was some conversation in town about Park and Rec's viability. I didn't directly participate in those conversations, but I was aware of them. And so it did strike me as a win-win that potentially this is something that, that would be a good and consistent source of revenue for Park and Rec. And um, over the course of the last year, uh, Jenny has done a wonderful job of really carrying the ball forward with the help of the executive board to try to get the program transferred over to the town. Um, and so as things, have, as things have been going along the way, there have been, uh, sometimes there's been just some issues. And so we met again and talked about whether or not it made sense if it would be more logical and perhaps easier for the school department to run it and to run it under the Department of Ele Elementary and Secondary Education's guidelines. So you can, if Hadley Kids is a private entity or if Park and Rec, even as a governmental entity, wants to run an after school program, the licensing board is early education and care. We deal with early education and care. Our preschool program is licensed through them. The licensing requirements for after school programs are, uh, it's, it's, it's a lot of work. And that's not to say it isn't a lot of work to do this through the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education, but it's also work that we are accustomed to doing. So it seems as though we can be helpful if the school department, if that program became an after school program that was operated by the school department, administered by the school department, um, that it would be probably, that seems like the most expeditious and easiest way to make sure that Hadley Kids is up and running and operating in the fall. And I have uh, the application from the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education. I have the quality standards and all of the paperwork that I would need to submit to proceed with that. It will take about three weeks to get the approval from the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education. And it will require, even though it's a, even though it would be a school department program, the Department of Elementary and Secondary Ed still does require a vote of the select board. So it would be a vote of the school committee and a vote of the select board. Mm -hmm. um, and the program has, so currently there's about 54 students. The ratios under, I'm going to say DESE, Elementary and Secondary Education, are 13 students to one staff member are the ratios that uh, DESE requires. Um, Kim gave me as part of the application what the numbers were per grade last year. It's K through sixth grade students. We wouldn't look at altering all that much. Park and Rec would still be involved. There are different, the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education requires that the program have different functions. Um, a program administrator, uh, a site director, uh, lead teachers, teacher aides. Um, so we would make sure that all of those positions were filled in accordance with the qualifications of the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education. For the most part, that would just be the existing staff. The director whom they currently have is resigning to take a full-time position elsewhere. Park and Rec, I would still be very interested in maintaining the arrangement. What, what was going to happen is that the town would increase Jenny's hours to 40 hours a week and revenue from Hadley Kids would pay for that increase in hours. The only thing that would be different than what Hadley Kids had originally kind of discussed with Park and Rec is I would want to be as a superintendent in school of schools, whichever of those titles is the grand poobah, that I would be the grand poobah, the one responsible for the reports, for ensuring um, that all staff are trained appropriately for signing off on everything. Um, but um, in terms of being 
on site, uh, Jenny and um, whoever our lead teacher would be, um, that's how I wouldn't necessarily be on site every day running Hadley Kids. I would be responsible for all the state reporting. And do you folks have questions about the program? I can tell you Kim provided us with uh, this year's financials up through April. Um, roughly uh, expenses at that time were roughly about $73,000 um, with revenues at about eighty-eight. dollars <coughs> that here. Of course, that was in April, so um, that's since changed. So the program offers, excuse me, about 71,000, 71,083. So expenses in April at 71 and revenues at 83. Um, the program has consistently uh, operated in the black with revenues over expenses every year. Uh, there is currently a uh, prudent reserve and that reserve fund is roughly $100,000. Hadley Kids uh, would, is having a discussion with their legal representation, and they would have to have their own legal representation. And then the school department has Fred Dupre. And Hadley Kids would be interested in transferring those funds into the custody of, under the custody of the school committee. It would operate, the entire program would operate like a revolving fund, just like the pre-K program. That prudent reserve would be deemed as such, and its purpose would be um, for the expansion of before and after school programming, so expansion and enrichment of that programming. So just like our pre-K or our athletic funds, you would see, just like you have in your packet, you would get a monthly update on that revolving account, and those monies, just like we can't use athletic revolving money to go out and buy math textbooks, or we, they're dedicated for the purpose that they're set aside for. Would we be responsible for um, any tuition uh, pricing, like increases or ch changes, I should say, uh, like I think we are? With pre-K? Pre yeah. yeah. Okay, so, so would we would set to... that, we would set the tuition um, annually, we would set any, the school committee's policies would, it would, you can think of it almost like you could think of the pre-K program. Yeah. So the policies would apply to that. Um, yeah. We currently are, are charging $14 per child per day mm -hmm. for the after school program. Does not include any before school. Um, that hasn't been something we've been able to offer, but obviously we would love to see in the future because I think a lot of parents would benefit, uh, especially school choice parents and families would benefit from having the option of early drop off. So we've been charging $14 per day. We increased that um, a little over two years ago. Uh, we are enrolled for the upcoming school year. Mm -hmm. We are completely full and yeah. we are on a wait list. Mm -hmm. So currently we have, we're licensed to accept 52 children per day mm -hmm. is what our license allows us to accept. My understanding is with a licensing under the, under DESE that those numbers could be uh, possibly increased. Um, obviously, it's based on the amount of space that you offer, and we rented simply the cafe. Mm -hmm. So the number of children was based upon the amount of square footage we provided um, on a regular day, which would have been just the cafe, and that was the maximum. So obviously, with other opportunities of being able to utilize other parts of the school, you could potentially increase the number of children. Right. And we do have a wait list currently as well of parents that are hoping that space opens up so they would mm -hmm. be able to take advantage. There's a really large demand. So the cost that we had set is set for the 1920 school year as well because we've already done the open enrollment yeah. with mm -hmm. the idea that we were headed in the general direction of mm -hmm. the park and rec was going to be able to take this over. Obviously, um, you know, that's that's not so much an opportunity now, but with the school, I think it's, I think it would be a wonderful fit. I really do. Um, and like I said, we, our program has been very successful and it really is in demand. We have so many, we open enrollment to current students and siblings first before we open enrollment to uh, new children and incoming kids. And unfortunately this year, even after we enrolled all of our current families, 
we had less than 10 spots open, yeah. mm -hmm. which is really limited. And we even set aside a set number for school choice specifically, hoping that it would entice people to know that they have that secured. Mm -hmm. So they would feel more comfortable with saying, yes, I'm committing to this option. And like I said, those spots filled up within a half an hour. That's great. <laughs> So, um, so what is the current staff to student ratio? Uh, currently we are, it is one to, uh, one to 13 ratio. Typically we don't run um, with that much of a space. Um, typically on average there's four to five staff people there per day. Um, a lot of our employees have been students from Hopkins, which has really been, it's been wonderful. And a lot of times we get referrals from those students of other kids that would be involved or interested in being involved over the years. So a lot of our staff is our students. Some are returning folks mm -hmm. that have been there for years. But typically uh, we have at least four to five staff members there per day because at, especially when there's days where they're nice, mm -hmm. we want the children to go out as much as possible. Some don't want to go out. So we try to have enough staff people to right. be able to accommodate children staying in the cafe versus going outside. And um, so if, if this is brought in under, under, under the school um, and there is that ability to have like a different staff to student ratio, um, thinking that there'd be more of an influx of the younger children, would, um, would the plan still be to increase staff with just, the, with just the, the high school students, or would there be the thought to bring in additional? I think, you, I think additional staff would be wonderful, and not necessarily um, high school. We have some, um, Leona Chamara has been with us for you know, 15 plus years, mm -hmm. and she comes back every year, and it's, it's a really nice mix of a lot of the staff. We have a lot of male staff, um, which has really benefited us this year, especially because we have a lot of older boys mm -hmm. that were in the program. So it's really, they're really great role models for the younger boys to see them because they're, you know, they're involved in sports and they're academics mm -hmm. and they're, you know, they're really great for the young boys to have an attraction. And they also get out and play with the kids versus some of the female staff not so much with you know the football games and that type of thing but i think increasing staff is is always an option and to be honest with you i think a lot of our staff that have come from hawkins have just been they've been really amazing really amazing and um one additional question so and currently you got um it's you rent the cafe yes that's correct um and so if there is like an after school thing in the cafe i know you, like you guys are stressed for space. Yes. You're hoping it's a nice day out so you can go outside. If yes. not, you all are in the corner of the cafe. Yes. So is the idea if you have the, if, if it's under school, school department, you'd have access to more than just that cafe so that it's like kids could be in other parts? Of the Absolutely. I mean, they would have access to whatever the school would allow. If they would allow kids in the music room or the art room or anything of that nature, obviously that would, that would benefit the amount of space. Currently, we have use of the gym as well. But unfortunately, when we're, we, there are times we don't have availability to the gym if there is sports, right. sporting events and things like that. There are very few events that happen in the cafe that force us to be limited in space because even when there is, you know, there's, it's a pretty large room mm -hmm. and we're able to set up other, um, you know, arts and crafts areas. You know, if it's mm -hmm. raining, there's a, you know, an area where we set up the chairs and have, you know, show a movie or something like that. So there's a lot of options. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the outside is, is definitely something right. that we strive for to get the kids out and running. But for the most part, obviously, you know, increasing the numbers would be simply something that you folks would be able to, to decide. And um, uh, obviously, hiring staff would also be your purview as well. And if they do have access to more of the building and stuff like that, um, do we have any, is, is there any ramifications with, um, with custodial staff or anything like that, um, as, like for increased hours or increased anything like that? Um, I'm just curious if there was any. So I, my guess is no. I mean, some of this we would learn along the way, but the expectation would be that if a staff person were working with students in another room, that they're... I would envision that for every activity, for every opportunity, not that children's time is micromanaged, but for every station and every activity, 
there's a laminated card of this is what you'll find here, this is how you leave here, and the staff member at the end of the activity signs off that they've done that. And so if people are just being mindful, we shouldn't have any additional work. We have PM custodians there already, but we really shouldn't. Do we know, I'm sorry, I have a, I have a few questions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, do we know currently what our increase in student count can be? Well, it would depend on what our increase can be. Yeah, so if they have a max at 52 right now, under DESE, what can we increase It's the to? ratio. They don't give you a max, nor do they, unlike elementary education and care, aside from the fire department signing off on how many kids sure. you can have in the space, they don't give you a max head as count. Need that ratio. So it's 1 to 13. So it would be the staffing would drive, the right. consistent staffing would drive how many okay. students we could have in the program. And so then currently, I know that you've you've maxed out with your current student population, yes. but as far as staff, I mean, I'm guessing all that staff is already hired for the year? They have been in the past year, but a lot of our staffing are seniors uh -huh. or are, are we college bound, so I'm okay. not quite sure the numbers of how many <clears throat> are returning. Okay. For the upcoming school year, obviously I would need to touch base with Olivia Rivera, who is the director. Okay. She had spoken with all of the staff um, a few months back to inquire if folks were planning on returning for the next school year mm -hmm. um, and that type of thing. So I would need to double check with her to find out okay. what she has for returning staff. And then obviously, like I said, it, it, what we found very helpful is that we a lot of times we get referrals of, you know, oh, well, you know, I have a couple friends at school that I think would be really great at this. And it's kind of turned into that. We also had some, some folks from the Park and Rec um, Committee that also suggested uh, you know, kids from the, the school that they mm -hmm. thought would be a good fit as well. And so. then when you said um, teachers and aides, would that be open to our current staff? Yeah, so Are the they? one thing, the only thing that gets a little tricky, so it doesn't, it's not insurmountable, but mm -hmm. for example, we do have one of our educational support professionals who currently works for Hadley Kids. Okay. And highly skilled, certified person. It, I have to, um, what I have to think through is people can't go into overtime. Now you're working for one department. Right. So it's a different, so um, we just have to, to take a look at that. Would be open into right. that. I've already been thinking through what that right. might look like and how that might, um, it would be unlikely that any one of our current, our teachers could do it. Teachers are not subject to wage hour law. They're okay. exempt from it. They, they don't get overtime. Mm -hmm. um, but the educational support professionals couldn't do it for five straight days. Right because they've gone over time every week. Would additional information be helpful as far as um, what our staff has worked? Typically, we were bi-weekly for pay period. Would it be helpful if you had an idea of how many hours our staffing will work on an average two-week period? I mean, especially for the, the folks that are school employees already, um, if that would help give you some perspective to inquire about the overtime idea. So if, Assuming uh, if the school committee decides this is something that they would like to move forward with, yes. um, then uh, you you will be my new BFF. Okay. I've got sure. a lot I want to do for a week and a half, go on vacation, come back, and then finish all this. Uh, so <laughs> uh, we'll look at schedules. I'll do everything. The, the application, which I've already handwritten uh, in the event that the school committee did want to move forward with this. So the application, aside from one piece that I have to make sound a bit more eloquent, um, would be pretty much ready. Um, the basic application would be ready to go, and then I would be working on pulling all the documentation for the indicators together. And then once they have this, uh, they'll respond within one to three weeks with a confirmation letter saying it's approved, you can continue. So Jenny would oversee the program. She would be on site, Jenny? I'm going to think through. Uh, so I am committed to keeping the arrangement in place, the yep. Park and Rec's budget, yep. that, so bringing her to 40 hours a week. Okay. Um, and for me, that means uh, also making sure that she is, is the point person on site, as she okay. is now, if there's any um, issues. But in terms of who's responsible for what, I would lay that out. So previously, if the school wasn't involved, then they had already set up. These are all of Jenny's duties. Some of those duties, I might say, actually the ultimate responsibility would be mine, so that mm -hmm. whether it's reporting or um, things of that nature. 
And then, um, sorry, I have a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and then, so I understand, so we vote on it, and then it goes to the town board, the and so board, yeah. the select board, um, to vote. Is that just an initial vote, or is that something where we decide that tuition is going to increase two years from now, whatever? Does that need to go through select board every time, or is it just through us at that point once they've done the initial? Once it was in the department. Yeah, department. then they don't they they don't yeah. do any governing over it. Okay. Um, so, but the they, law that governs this, Chapter yeah. seventy one, Section twenty six B, yeah. says that the superintendent, on behalf of the school committee, shall submit in writing a plan of said services, this application, to the commissioner of education. For his written approval, I guess I never think a woman will be commissioner, provided um, that said extended school services proposed in said plan shall consist of such care as shall be determined by standards established by said commissioner, essentially every indicator they've, they've laid out here. Um, approval of public school operated school age child care programs will be based on submission of a registration form. Um, upon receipt, a confirmation letter. Actually, so perhaps I was mistaken. I thought first I thought it said something about the select board, but I could be mistaken. So maybe it is just us. I don't know where I got it in my head that the select board had to vote. The after school program is Article 10 on the select board meeting this evening. Um, which is my next. Oh, stop. Stop. okay. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So I actually, you know, I could have just been making that up. I thought for sure it said something about the select board. But they would not, I know for a fact that once, even if it required the town to say, yes, mm -hmm. the school department can set up such a program, mm -hmm. they wouldn't have, you're an independent board, you oversee everything with the schools, they don't vote on anything aside from the budget. That's it. So how, how does it work? Um, you talked about if Jenny were to go to full time, uh, 40 hours, but is she still park and rack? Yeah. I'm thinking about, okay, when we go and we look at the town budget and we look at the salaries of all of the town officials, she's going to show up there. In park and rack. We do a line item rack. transfer, just like you do for the school resource officer. You see that money that's there? Yeah. So it says attendance officer is what it says in our budget. Okay. What happens is we just, Chris does a transfer to um, the police department and then they get that, that shows up as revenue and it's an expense on our side. Okay. But the employee, Jenny, still lives under Park and Rec. She's, I mean, I will give her feedback or on her duties associated with this, but she's Park and Rec's employee and she reports to that board. Got it. But all of the other employees that would, all of the other staff would be mm -hmm. school, school employees. Mm -hmm. Yes. Do you see, um, I mean, I definitely, I see benefits, mm -hmm. a lot of benefits to this. and. Um, I'm very supportive of this. I, I, you mentioned one of the um, kind of considerations around uh, uh, the ESP folks who can't pull over time. Mm -hmm. But are there any other, you know, liabilities or change in, um, you know, I guess risks that you can think of that we need? No, to because I don't of? think that um, you're at two point five hours essentially more or less yes. so nobody's going to come into benefits the only people would already be benefited employees yes. in town got it and jenny's benefits i mean all of it, Her at the end of the year whatever the town decides to charge off in accordance with the memorandum of understanding that it has with the school department mm -hmm. but her benefits should still land over and Park and Rec because and she hit that, over 20 hours while working for Park and Rec. If right. I need the dollar figure of what her salary is that from the increase, I have that figure as well because we subsidized. Because yes, they right. had already increased her hours to 40 hours for FY19 and then didn't budget mm -hmm. it with the town. So in April, she ran out of money in her Got budget it. to be paid. So uh, Hadley Kids Good thing you have that reserve. Yeah. yeah. Right. So <laughs> how the kids paid the differential yeah. between her hour increase, anticipating that it would have been already under the park and rec, but right. was not yet. But obviously she had done all of the work to get to the licensing point. So she had done all of the duties that were requested of her, but there was the revenue never changed over. So we just simply cut a check to the town to subsidize her so, salary. Okay. So that's my Yes. How does this impact the school department taking it over with the executive board? So they're essentially, and, and Fred would walk through 
folks and with me in the application what needs to be done on our end, but essentially that's what they've hired their own attorney for. So what okay. they'll do in terms, and that has to do with their articles of incorporation, their mm -hmm. nonprofit, that has absolutely nothing to do with us. So that's their attorney and in accordance with their articles, they'll dissolve yes. or as, that as is it's our written. Intention. Okay. And then they transfer the funds. Mm -hmm. Okay, exactly. That's our yeah. intention. Um, there are some hoops to jump through as far as the state, if there's any type of tax um, liabilities or obligations being a 501c3 that we might incur before the transfer happens, but our ultimate goal is to dissolve how the kids think and the board would disband. Um, like I said, there's a few hoops that need to go through as far as that process is concerned, but would not stop this process from going forward. It would be too separate, which is why we had hired um, Attorney Alabama to represent, to help us with those um, hoops and things mm -hmm. through the state. Are there any benefits that um, the program is currently receiving by being a 501c3 that you would be losing by being Not a one. one. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, when the program was set up, which was 20 years ago, mm -hmm. it was set up as a 501c3 able to accept donations. Mm -hmm. The program has never accepted a donation since day one. So we've never functioned as a 501c3. Got it. So we have never taken advantage of any benefit of the 501c3. So that's why we're coming across a few more hoops yeah. that we need to overcome because of the fact that we were listed as a 501c3 but never actually received Function any of that. the benefits. Yeah. We never functioned as a 501c3. Okay. So at this point, it's just a matter of um, following through with the state to dissolve the 501c3 and then dissolve Hadley Kids, Inc. In full, to, in order for the program to be completely under the school department. Right. I have suggested that it would probably be, if in fact it was the school committee's will that we move forward with this as a school program, it would be helpful to me to see if there were some folks, at least initially, that could operate somewhat like the Friends of Hadley Preschool. So there'd be an advisory board mm -hmm. that operates mm -hmm. somewhat with the pre-K program. And that would be wonderful. We do have a lot of parents that would be happy to be involved in, in the day-to-day -day type of thing of the after school, so I think that wouldn't be an issue at all. So. Yeah. Now, who would be responsible for um, onboarding and hiring new staff if that's... The school department. I can designate somebody for that, but at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's the school department. So an administrator with hiring authority within the school department. I could I, define a designee, and that may in fact be Jenny, but I, again, I would want to make sure that as part of the procedures, they wouldn't become policies until such time as the policy subcommittee had recommended them and the school committee had voted them, but just some, a set of procedures that says, okay, and if final uh, hiring, just as it is now, when I get a hiring recommendation from staff here, it's a sign off by the superintendent and we need to keep any of you questions on file and all the things that we do now in our hiring. Do we, is there any possibility of expanding prior to kindergarten and going into preschool, um, allowing um, preschool? I don't see why not because the, um, the application actually asked how many pre-K students we have. So I think it's just been to have the kids has done K through six, but we could. And the before care program, so my thinking would be if this is the direction that we went in, my primary focus would be getting everything squared away for a smooth start. And I believe that HKI would continue to exist until we knew that every T was crossed and every I was dotted, but this this is not going to take forever. As soon as they have the information, within a month we'll know from then, and I can call them. I can, I can get them to respond to me. I promise. Um, and then um, I would make sure that that was going along, at least at the outset, well. Mm -hmm. We had talked about starting with pre-K, asking families if they'd be interested in a before care program. That's mm -hmm. something the pre-K staff was very interested yeah. in. Um, so definitely, I just yeah. wanna, would want to make sure that we do everything thoroughly and well. Yeah, because yeah. that might be that might be a real a, mm -hmm. attractor. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You know, because I know, it, it, 
before school too, definitely, but then parents that are looking at preschool programs may opt to choose something that's outside of Hadley because of the expelled yeah, hours. hours. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. And I am a school choice family as well. So mm -hmm. yeah. So <laughs> well, my son is school choice. I live in Chicopee. So mm -hmm. I do school choice my son. And granted, it works out very well because my day for work starts ten minutes after I have the ability to drop him off, which works out very well, but if that wasn't the case, I would be looking for the same type of thing at the right, four school yeah. program to allow me to drop off early so right. I could go to work. So I think that would be a huge, huge perk for folks. So there's working. some opportunities. There yeah. are very much a lot of opportunities. Yep. Absolutely. Yes. So we do need to vote on this. Are there any other questions? Just one more. Sure. Yeah, yeah. So we're confident, it sounds like you're fairly confident in the timeline of being able to get this approved before the start of the school year to not impact students that are currently enrolled, families that are currently set and ready and planning on this. So here's what I'm comfortable saying is that the families that are planning on aftercare yep. are going to show up and it's going to be okay. there. If it is technically still owned by HKI until September 30th or sure. something because the application hasn't been approved or they've asked for something in a procedure that they asked me to do, but there'll be there'll be a place for folks to go. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Good. And that is our main objective. We just want the program to keep continue. it going. That's yeah. all that we want. And honestly, if you have any additional questions that you think about, I'm happy to give you my contact information. If there's anything I can provide for you, uh, informational wise, whether it's financial or otherwise, I'm happy to do that. Great. Good. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Paul. Got any questions? <coughs> The one question I have is for Annie. Yep. How much of an increase of your workload is this going to be? So I'm, I okay, am that. confident that on the getting things squared away on the front end um, will be the most intense part of it. And then it's a, it's a program that's been functioning well and without any major issues in the five years that I've been here. And I don't know of any prior to that. So um, I think... I wouldn't offer if I didn't think that I could show up for the task and deliver. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Great. Okay, so are there any other questions before we move to a vote? Just that we get updates along the way if this is yeah. approved, just to know that things are going yeah. smoothly ahead. Yeah. My thought is just again to the parents that at least are planning so far. Yeah. And if we expand them further conversations, maybe mm -hmm. later. I agree with that. Great. Okay, is there a motion? So I'll motion to approve um, that the school department take over the Hadley Kids program starting in the 2019-2020 school year. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Is that an eye from you? Very you got a thumbs up. Yeah. Thank you for your time. It's a great program. And like I said, it is a wonderful program. And like I said, if there's anything that you would like more information about, like I said, um, Annie has all of my contact information. You and me. Friends. Feel free. And <laughs> she knows where to find me, too. So. We always have good candy. We always have good candy. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> Feel free and stop in. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks. My son loved that program. <laughs> all right. Okay, uh, moving on. D, Hopkins Academy schedule and course enrollments. It's I think, really interesting. I think for the most part, uh, the course enrollments, um, there, there are still some conflicts that we'll see, which is typical in high schools. When students show up the first day, they're given a direction of if you have a hole in your schedule, if something doesn't work. Um, you come down to the guidance office during that period and we'll adjust it. But for the most part, I checked in with Brian today, it looks like almost all of our students are fully scheduled. We still will take school choice students over the summer and we often get school choice students over the summer. I did want to point out to you, because I would ask this question, um, two courses. You see AP French has an enrollment that looks like, that is two right now and Logical Reasoning has four. And so a logical question is, well, wait a minute, we, we question whether or not to continue programs that had really low enrollment 
two years ago. So I just want folks to understand if they're watching this. So a couple of years ago, we evaluated our home economics program. Part of the issue there was low enrollment, but if you also recall at that time, we had some heavily enrolled math courses. Yeah. We had some 28s and 29s in math. We had 3.29 uh, full-time equivalent teachers in mathematics. And um, so in order to increase our math FTEs, um, we replaced a home economics full-time equivalent um, by increasing math from 3.29 to 4.0, and we use the remainder of that FTE to increase our adjustment counselor position from 2.2 and a half days per week to four days per week. Um, so there was some, there was low enrollment and some needs. Why I am comfortable with low enrollment in AP courses and in logical reasoning is because part of the new accountability system, that's one of the things that high schools are evaluated on, the number of students taking advanced courses. And I know and I appreciate the fact that the school committee doesn't get overly exercised when our accountability numbers, if we the scoring is zero through four on the new system. If you recall last year, we had a number of zeros. Now sometimes as a small school, um, it's easy for example, I'm just using these numbers, not these the actual graduates, but our most recent class was a, a graduating class of 54 students. So if you even had a single student who has done a five-year plan, even though that was a plan that was agreed upon by a team, that is now um, 3% or 5% of technically the roundup. It's 5% considered non-grad. That would push us to a zero on that accountability. So we are um, eager to chase positive points in offering advanced coursework. And also with the language, we'll see how this pans out. We have seen some increases. So they combined French 4 and 5. Um, we are hoping that students will consider advanced language this year. To our knowledge, we had one student definitely get the state seal of biliteracy. We're waiting, because uh, all the students took both the AP course and another test called the Apple. Um, she was able to do that based on her Apple scores. Uh, if some of the other students did in fact get AP scores at a level high enough, they too would be reissued diplomas with the state seal of biliteracy. And we certainly want to make that to, available to as many students as possible. Now, um, looking at some other courses with some very low numbers, um, I'm, ju I'm just curious if there not, and not remember what the numbers are, what the numbers were for last year. Um, how often are things like this looked at of like, perhaps like look, looking at like teacher specialties and everything like that, um, like perhaps art history is only, only three people are interested in learning in, in art history, but maybe there'd be another course that this teacher yeah. could study, could, to, could teach that would draw in more students. I'm just curious, like, how much evaluation of the courses like that are there usually? So it happens, it does happen every year, and even this is something that the schedule could, when I see you in at our August meeting, there could be some change, there definitely some changes in enrollments, and you may even see course changes in that. So that analysis does happen every year. And, and sometimes more than once in the year. So a teacher will say, I'd like to try this course. And the teachers typically say it because a student or students have come to them and said, can we run a class on something? And we'll give it a go and we see if there are students in it. Sometimes Mr. Beck will keep, some of these courses are designed to be very, very small. Art history is not one of them, but some of these courses are actually designed um, to really give students some intensive work and skills. And so they're going to be very small classes. Um, but Mr. Beck may keep something in there that has low enrollment because he knows there's a chance there's going to be a conflict in that block and that students will need an elective. So mm -hmm. he'll keep it there until things are completely shaken out. And the reality is, and I'll say it again, this is true in every high school, there are still changes happening in terms of scheduling that first week. You have kids right. cycling mm -hmm. through the guidance office. Mm -hmm. so. You may see in some cases he has a course there because he might be thinking, mm, I don't know if this other class is going to make it. So I need to have options for students. That's good. Yeah. 
How about those chorus numbers, huh? Yeah, they are through the roof. We did try to run drama. We were really excited about that, but we only got one registration for drama. Boo. Um, I know, so maybe we'll do art history and drama. I don't know, maybe they'll dramatic art history. <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll come in and teach a dramatic art history. <laughs> um, but we may try that again. So we, if students express their interest again, and Miss Lanham runs a great drama club, so she may start building that interest. All right, that was just for your information. So, okay, so this is an action. All right, start time task force. This is what I'm thinking in terms of representation. Um, so a student representative from each level, faculty representation from each level, same thing with parents. I suggested one school committee uh, liaison, and um, I would say that um, that would be something that someone who's interested just email me and let me know because we don't, this is not a subcommittee of the school committee. If it becomes a subcommittee, then if the school committee person can't make it, we have to cancel the whole meeting. So, um, and that's also why I've kept it to one number, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then that we would uh, meet monthly, um, that we would ask, so I would try to send things out and try to get people on board in August um, and let them know and, and set up a, a consistent schedule. This is when we're looking at meeting, make sure it's uh, that parents it is respectful of folks who are working. Look at the research, talk about options, and, um, and then with the suggestions and ideas, Chris and I can analyze costs and contract, meaning collective bargaining unit, um, and transportation implications. So, meaning how many tiers do we need? Are we combining any sort of busing? Great. When, when, I forget when we talked about when we were going to bring this back to the school committee meeting. Or did we define the definitive date? I think just uh, we would look at it in the next year. So August was your idea of starting. Well, to, to, to pull the group together and yeah. then yeah. when kids are back in school. And right. I, yeah. So in September to have meetings. And then if we're going to make a decision around this, I would be updating the school committee or the school committee member who's a part of this team would report out. Um, monthly, and if it were something that we were looking at for the following school year, we would want to get that sorted out in the budget. So we're going to have to do right. some really fast and furious work. I see right. the the group saying, "Okay, what's what's our work? Who's doing what? What are the questions we have? What are our criteria for analyzing possibilities?" Like we, so deciding on cr criteria collectively of how we would vet proposals for changing start times mm -hmm. and um, deciding what questions we want answered around research and purpose and maybe two people work on something people are split up because let's say we have to work really fast and really hard because mm -hmm. um, if you're going to make a change then we got to we start budgeting you get the budget January February and March and vote on it in April or it may be something that through this work, you decide you're not going to rush it for the yeah. 2021 right. year, right. and you say we'll roll it out fall right. 2021. Right. Um, 2021. 20, <laughs> God, it's confusing. Yeah. Um, great. Yeah. And it, I purposely, I am obviously facilitating <laughs> this and note taking and getting data for people, but um, so I will do the will of the committee on this, is my role in it. My only question would be, I, I like the student representation, so that you have representation kind of from each area of the school, but I, I would say, and I understand sometimes it's hard to get parent involvement in this type of dedication, but and even in faculty, getting a well-rounded from that aspect too, because as we kind of talked about it a few months ago, there's a potential impact for the elementary school. So yeah. trying to get parent involvement from elementary middle and high, I know that might be challenging, um, and faculty as well, so that it's not all representation right. from high school. No, so that was my thinking. That's why the three levels was the goal. There's one rep from each level. Okay, yeah. sounds good. So if um, you're interested in serving on this, let Annie know. Yeah. Um, as she said, there can just be, really be one of us on that. Mm -hmm. All right, good. Um, Calendar.
for the 1920 year. Thank you for bringing this back out. I know, Tara, I remember you and I talked about this ages mm -hmm. back, but uh, this is a helpful listening to see kind of the cycle of what we know is coming, what we address um, uh, in every month, typically. Mm -hmm. uh, so this was really helpful to see. Is there anything you wanted to highlight on In that? this year, our July meeting actually would happen August 5th at that retreat, and the August mm -hmm. meeting is at the end of August. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. At least I'll pass yes, it over um, Okay. We are now at personnel report. We are still needing to hire a middle school science teacher, so Katie Gallagher is moving to Vermont. Um, so we have one, that position we need to hire. I think we're very close to hiring our one-year long-term guidance counselor substitute while Ms. Cullinan is in Spain with her family for the year. And yeah, those are the things we're working on right now. Okay. Public comment? This is how you get famous. Business. <laughs> Business manager report. Chris. Okay, so I have a few items. Um, you know, the first is the expense report. If you look at the last page of that report, it shows we have $700 left to last the rest of the year. So, um, the rest of the school year. The rest of the school year, <laughs> yes. Um, actually, at this point in time, we're at negative $56,000. Um, because more things have been processed since uh, I ran this report. We still have $195,000 remaining in budgeted school choice money, so with a, with a balance of minus 56, and, and obviously that you know, will fluctuate as additional bills come in, um, yeah. but we certainly don't expect another $140,000 of bills coming in the last week of school. So uh, you know, we'll finish the year in the positive, that's a good thing. We'll use a little less school choice money than we had anticipated, which means we will carry over more uh, funds into next year, so that'll certainly be helpful. Great. Any questions on the expenses? No. Uh, grants, again, are fully spent with the exception, uh, and now the health budget is down to about $248 remaining. Uh, circuit breaker is fully spent. There's a remaining amount, but that amount we will carry over into next year as well. Um, that's within the limit of, of uh, how much we can carry over, so we will do that. And the health grant, I will make sure, is fully spent in the next week. Question on grants. Is, is there any, do you know of any grants that we may now be eligible for by having the how the kids mm -hmm. program be mm -hmm. part of this Yeah, class. it's on my list. 21st Century uh, Extended Learning Grants. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, revolving accounts. So, um, let's see, there's really not much to talk about here. Um, you'll see good news in June. So, uh, actually, you could have seen good news in May for the lunch account because I did transfer $30,000 of lunch salaries to our regular budget. So the regular bu budget already um, reflects that $30,000 transfer, but the revenues were not posted yet on the town side for the lunch account, so I could not include mm -hmm. it. So mm -hmm. I'm hoping you don't have a school committee meeting next month while I'm on vacation because then Oh, okay, good. Because I did not want Anne to be able to report another positive balance. <laughs> don't like to see that trend. Like. So. Um, but, you know, from the way it looks now, we should still close the year in, um, in the positive now. So, you know, that's certainly a good thing. Um, and the preschool account shows a uh, pretty decent decrease, but again, the May revenues weren't posted in that one either, so... Once they are posted, that'll bump it back up again. Mm -hmm. School choice. Hey, Chris. Oh, scared the yeah, I was just going to ask about that. <clears throat> the school choice, do you foresee that going down any further? Yeah. Um, I don't. Uh, it, it will go down 
um, by, you know, roughly $56,000 or whatever we finish the year at. Um, it will go down by that much, but we still have the June payment coming. Um, and by all expectations, the report that Desi gave wasn't super clear as to what our last amount would be. But if I was able to calculate it correctly, we should be seeing about $130,000 coming in in the month of June. So we'll net an increase of plus or minus $80,000. So we'll actually go up about $80,000. So that means we'll end the year with more school stories than we began? Um, I believe so, yeah. yes. Yes, we will. So we've managed Even though we it. used more school stories this year than we did last We've year. also, yeah, you'll, I think you'll also see um, in our August or September report that we, we were attracting school choice families throughout this year. We've seen an uptick an actual choice, particularly at the elementary school. Um, and so our, our numbers are also, they've increased just over this past year. And I think we're set up to see um, an increase next year. So we were able to contribute more out of school choice towards the budget, yet almost wind up in a similar starting spot. Yeah, it, it'll be right around where we started, which yep. certainly is not a bad thing. Good. Um, let's see, what's next? Oh, the capital plan. Yep. Uh, so this is a little more detailed. This is for Jack, Kelly. Jack, yes. if you're watching, your capital <laughs> plan is here. <laughs> <laughs> um, and there were some slight adjustments made. Actually, the the version you have here, there were some slight adjustments made at about quarter of five tonight as well, um, which I can explain to you. Um, but the changes made to this, um, Trisha and I sat down, if you look at number five, school bus replacement, it says full size. size. I'll have to take that out because there are a couple of uh, mid-size buses as mm -hmm. well. Um, but we looked at the inventory of buses, and what we did was we planned these out the purchases so that when a bus is 10 years old, we'll replace it. And so we'll keep having that replacement program. Um, what that means is that when I look at the buses, their age and the miles that they have, um, Tricia and I discussed kind of a rotating of the buses to make sure that we don't end up having a bus that's five years old and has 200,000 miles on mm -hmm. it, and we have a bus that's nine years old that has 60,000 miles, you mm -hmm. know. So if we kind of rotate them amongst the routes, we'll end up maintaining that mileage, and, you know, once they hit that 10-year, we'll replace it. Uh, let's see. Um, the grease traps, you know, um, that's, that's still um, out there several years from now. Mm -hmm. um, number two, the girls' locker room remodel. We did get a price mm -hmm. estimate. For that project so that is just the girls portion um, and there was an added cost if we did girls one year and boys the next or you know at another time just because of the fact that you know I mean they're going to charge more if they have to come two separate years than if they do it all at once um, so this amount actually reflects um, you know the amount of just doing the girls at this time uh, athletic fields I, I have it in there as a projected cost. I don't have an actual dollar amount because we already received the money. So um, it's, it's not, you know, I wanted the full amount to be in there, but you don't see anything for any of the years, at least for phase one. Right. Um, let's see, the unit events were also, you can see that's number nine. That was in year five, 2023 to 2024. That's those items behind... Um, whatever stuff is over there behind a cart and some instruments it looks like. Um, and those are, most of them are the originals from the 1950s. There were also some installed in the 1960s. I would say the town of Hadley certainly got their money's worth out of these, but at this point in time, um, it's, it's pretty hard to find parts. And they end up doing these workarounds to, you know, well, if we connect this to that, we won't need that part that we can't replace anymore. And you know, they're not really running at what I'd call anywhere near optimum efficiency. So um, we had that amount in here. 
the version that I just did at, at quarter of five tonight. I moved that over to year two, um, and I can send you guys the updated version. Uh, the reason I moved it to year two was we applied for um, Mass School Building Authority money for both the locker room and the unit events. And so if we would get substantial reimbursement for that, um, the town already has it on their capital plan as a result of them knowing that we were applying for these funds in year two. Um, so we would have it the same with the, I guess, caveat that we may move it out if we don't get that funding. Um, you know, it's, it's kind of a, a heads up to the town that you know we'd want to do it if we can get funding, but if not, we can push it outward a little bit. And, um, and so, you know, you can see underneath the items one to nine, there's kind of a description of what each item is now. Um, before, I used to just have a little comment on my Excel sheet, but that didn't really give you guys a heck of a lot of heads up. I would just hover over it and read what it said to you. Um, I also sat with David. Um, he gave me his tech, tech upgrades. The, the items that we had in the prior version of this were left over from when Mike Duffy was here, and most of them weren't um, still relevant. Uh, you know, every time I would go to Mike and say, do you need this money this year? And he'd say, oh, no. Um, you know, I was able to do that with Helping Hearts money or, you know, the trustees covered that or something. So we, we didn't actually, you know, take the funds in those years. Um, so this is David's plan, and you can see down below um, what makes up all of the tech upgrades um, just in the technology details. The last items at the very bottom, um, athletic field phase one timeline. The goal was to actually be already out to bid. We're still waiting on that piece of land. So until we get that settled, um, we were scheduled to meet with the Conservation Commission last week, I believe. But they need proof of ownership of that land before they can really, uh, you know, hear the project. So I canceled it and asked them if they could move us into July. Uh, hopefully by then it will be resolved and we can start to move forward with the project. But as a result of this, I kind of gave a timeline that's really a best case scenario timeline that I could think of. Um, and that is that, you know, by July, the negotiations with landowner will be finalized. The Conservation Commission meeting will take place. Once the meeting takes place, then we can develop the bid specs. Uh, the designers said they really didn't want to develop them before because if the Conservation Commission wanted some changes, now you're, you're you know, you're, you're kind of redoing it. So it made no sense. Um, then in August, we would go out to bid. They anticipated that it would take the better part of a month for the, the entire bid process. And uh, so I put construction work begins with a question mark in September because, yeah. you know, with with the timeline, you know, if they, just say things get moved back another month, you really don't want to begin construction, I wouldn't think, in October. And, um, and the other thing, of course, that we have to consider is the winning bidder, will they actually have the capability to begin right away? You know, um, it would seem doubtful they'd, that they'd actually be available and just wouldn't have a job of this size, uh, you know, or would have the time for a job of this size. But I just wanted to lay out, you know, in a perfect world, this is what will happen. So, um, you know, stay tuned. We'll keep you in the loop as, as things develop. And, um, you know, I, I will adjust this on a weekly to monthly basis, depending <laughs> on when things change. Um, the locker room timeline, which I guess at this point would also kind of be considered the Univent replacement timeline, mm -hmm. um, if they both actually happen in year two. Um, th that one's a little bit easier because it's out next summer, and of course we don't have, you know, um, any kind of external issues that would, uh, you know, cause a delay or anything. So. That looks to, that it still, you know, could possibly happen in the summer of 2020. The one thing that may, uh, you know, kind of put a wrench in the works of that would be if we do get MSB, MSBA money and there's some kind of process that we have to go through that might delay the project or something. So, um, but typically with the reimbursement amounts, you know, it's, it's worth a delay anyway. So, 
Uh, and, and that's pretty much it. So I, I can send you the, the revised yeah, version that I did. Chris. Thank you. Any questions? No, I like this though. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, actually, I, yeah. I, I like it as well that you know it's more detailed and you know so everybody yeah. can see everything. Okay. Uh, school committee reports and discussion. Policy committee. No activity there. Right. We are meeting Tuesday. Tuesday. Great. And happy times for you, Miss Tara. Sue put the packet on my desk this morning. I said, I can't even look at that right now. <laughs> I'll be getting it tomorrow. <laughs> I'm excited. Nice. Hopefully oh, the right one. Oh, no. <laughs> All right. Um, finance tri board. They're meeting tonight, so right. we'll, we're in conflict. If I could add to that, yeah. too, um, uh, collective bargaining, just to update that we're, we're continuing discussions with the um, bus drivers. And we have uh, had, um, I believe, three meetings, and we have one more coming up in July 10th, uh, which will hopefully be a final meeting. We've had some proposals and counters and uh, are moving towards agreement on most points. And when we get to the point where both sides are comfortable with all tentative agreements, then uh, we'll invite David Nixon I'm saying this so Sue Giza will hear it in the minutes and remind me we will invite David Nixon to that meeting. He's not required to come, but he is invited to participate in that vote. That's right. And if I may, I just got this today, and so there wasn't time mm -hmm. to put it into open uh, the packet, but I'll read this and we can put it in the packet. I did get a response from our communication on June 10th to um, Senator Comerford about the, um, the uh, change to the charter reimbursement. Um, and she, a representative from her office wrote back saying, uh, thank you for writing to voice your alarm over this new language. Senator Comerford was equally alarmed when she learned of this. Senator Comerford is opposed to this change in the charter school reimbursement formula and had filed a budget amendment last month through the Senate budget. The budget amendment would have codified the new 160-40 reimbursement schedule, but without the five-year maximum language. This amendment was not adopted in the budget, but Senator Comerford was able to speak with the chair of the Ways and Means about opposing this language in the Budget Conference Committee, which I'm assuming is the next step for this. Um, the Senate chair of Ways and Means agreed that the Senate would oppose this language in the Budget Conference Committee and Senator Comerford has continued to advocate with the conference committee that this charter reimbursement change not be included in the final budget. Um, so just a reminder that what we wound up having was our district would be owed um, $83,000 less in fiscal year 20 if the proposed change passes. Um, and you know, we talked about that statewide it would be 43% cut um, compared to what's owed in the current law. So, Still in progress, obviously, there's a lot of uh, check to, or approval processes along the way, but it's good to hear that there's a response. I think that they've got it on their radar, obviously, and hopefully um, the outcome will be favorable. Thank you for doing that. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Thanks for, thank you Amherst, too, Peter, mm -hmm. for yeah, <laughs> pulling that together. <laughs> okay. Um, Let's see, we have capital and fields. I Which, think we got everything yeah. on that. CES and charting the course. So I, I didn't know if you folks at RSVP'd or you'd like me to do that for you if you're planning on going to charting the course. This was my reminder to ask you. And even if you don't, if feel free to RSVP on your own. But if you wanted to go to September 7th and you were thinking I would be doing that, you can let me know and I'll let Mr. Deal know, or Dr. Deal know. Count me in. Yes, if you can let me know. Yeah. I think I need to re-up mine. It was it was a good yeah. course I recall to me. Yeah, it's probably a good idea to I also saw that there was the summer sessions, the mask mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, sessions. It looked interesting. I, I don't I can't go, but I did see that that curriculum came out. So I'll have to look. that's coming up soon within the next month. I will RSVP Heather for the time being. If anybody else wants me to add them, just let me know and I'll let you collaborative know. Thank yeah, you. I'm going to send you an email. I'm thinking yes. Okay. We need to decide something. 
All right, and our retreat, our retreat is scheduled August 5th? 4th, 5th? Fifth. Fifth. <laughs> I'm looking. Next With meeting, right? place to be determined. It might be at Roadway in Hadley. We might see if we can get a room at yeah. the Delaney House, too. So we'll see. And two things that will be added, you folks had talked about wanting to talk about norms and I say norms and codes of conduct, but when elections change, just kind of putting pen to paper around what the culture of the school committee is. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, then kind of the discussion that we had last year, uh, where would we like to be, where are we now, um, looking at that gap and trying to identify what I would call um, inhibitors and encouragers or accelerators. What are the conditions that are moving us forward and what are the things that are impeding us and then how do we you know prioritize what we want to tackle grow our success and solve our problems i received two emails from david nixon so we have two things added to our retreat agenda the town has requested that we review the town's capital plan and and ours and then submit to the town no later than august 7th um, any changes to the town-wide capital plan. I mean, of course, I don't think we get to weigh in on what other departments are doing. We try, but <laughs> we have to review the entire town's capital plan and the um, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats, the SWOT analysis, which I believe Humera and Heather were the only folks who were here, because that's back when Linda, Roby, and yep. Sean were on the school committee also, and, and you and Humera. Um, that's when that was done, and they sent that to me, and the select board would like us to look at that, make any updates we would like to that, and submit to it, and submit it to them by August 27th. All right. Okay. Hey, can you remind me of the time? You said August 5th? August 5th at 4.30. August 5th at 4.30. With location to be determined, um, and... We'll do, you know, we'll plan to eat while we're there, but it's either bring your own or order in delivery. Um, but it's, you know, we're covering our own expenses for that. And that's taking place at the July meeting? No, well, it's, it's it replacing is. the end of July meeting. Yeah, right. So okay. It is. Right. So I'll just say, I'll, I'll do my best. Obviously, I'll be, uh, that's my first day back at work, and I'll have been in the country just a few days. Understood. So I'll be present physically. <laughs> <laughs> well, even if you can make it, uh, you know, late, a late start, we'd be thrilled to have you. Even if you nap yeah, during it. Yeah. I will, it won't be reflected in the minutes. <laughs> we'll give you a cot. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, remaining action items. So approval of the AP warrants that were submitted in May 2019. Is there a motion? Motion to approve the warrants, uh, AP warrants submitted in May 2019. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I will abstain. Approval of the minutes from May 28th, 2019. Move to approve the minutes from May 28th, uh, 2019. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Approval of warrants submitted in May 2019. Is there a motion? Motion to approve the warrants submitted in May 2019. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, and we did the field trip. Our next meeting date, we have April 5th at 4.30 is the retreat. And, um, August 5th. August 5th. Oh my God, April, yeah. <laughs> August, sorry. Um, okay, and we will, uh, I will entertain a motion to enter into an executive session to discuss strategy with respect to contract negotiations with non-union personnel and to discuss collective bargaining strategy with respect to the United Public Service Employees Union. Is there a motion? Motion. And we need a roll call vote. You need a second. Oh, second. Okay. okay, roll call vote. Keith? Aye. Tara? Aye. Myself? Yes. Paul? All right. <laughs> yeah, we'll go into executive session. <laughs>